businesses and divorce. The approach to business valuations can be summed up as follows. Keep it simple, keep it relevant to the issues and the outcome you're trying to achieve and keep it proportionate in terms of the costs you spend. Hello, I'm John Hind, mediator, former solicitor, trainer and coach. Now that said, I guess the main question here for mediation, just as it would be if you were in court, is this. Will it be possible in your circumstances to reach a fair financial outcome without a formal business valuation carried out by an independent expert accountant? And if you do need a valuation, how much detail will you both need and how much should you spend on this? Now these are important questions to ask at an early stage because formal valuations can be very expensive and prolong the whole process and it has to be said many situations simply do not require formal valuations. If you have time and really want to get to grips with the law in this area, I can recommend reading Resolutions Guide to Good Practice for Instructing Experts, which you'll find on this web page. Now, even though this guide relates to court proceedings, the principles and much of the recommended processes for selecting and instructing experts are equally relevant to mediation. The area of business valuations and divorce can be a fairly complicated uh, area and full of potential pitfalls. It is too easy to fall into the trap of believing that just because there are business interests to take into account, an expensive formal valuation is necessary on every occasion. This is simply not the case. When thinking about whether you'll need a formal valuation, you may want to ask yourselves the following key questions which I return to in subsequent videos in this series. First, what are you trying to achieve with the valuation? Have this discussion early on in the process because it may well influence the approach you take to the valuation evidence you seek to obtain. Secondly, is the business going to be sold? If not, is it not all hypothetical anyway? Thirdly, what if it's a one-person business with very few assets simply producing an income for that person? Is evaluation really necessary or is it more relevant to focus on the question of the sustainable earnings? And finally, is there a, any liquidity or cash in the business that can be extracted without damaging the business? And what would be the tax consequences of doing so? Now, this short series of videos is not intended as a substitute for appropriate expert financial and legal advice, but more as a guide on, firstly, how to approach deciding whether you need an expert. And then, secondly, how to go about selecting the right one for the job. And thirdly, how to instruct them to ensure that they provide you with the information you need to reach a fair financial outcome. Now, in most situations involving business interests, I would recommend that you work closely with your solicitor to support you to make the right decisions in mediation. The amount of information and support your mediator can give you will depend on their financial expertise and whether, for example, they also have legal training. Some do and some don't. If you've not already done so, you may want to watch our online series all about working with solicitors in what I call our supported mediation model, in which you are, you are supported in mediation by the most appropriate family professionals for the job at the time. Whether you need solicitors, accountants, financial advisors, or other financial experts to help you, the key will be for the mediator to create a process which puts you and your former partner in the decision-making driving seat, but with enough financial support to be able to make your own decisions and to do all this in the most efficient, cost-effective, and joined-up way. When it comes to business interests and information, especially if you've not been a direct part of that business or used to dealing with the business, you'll most likely need additional support from your solicitor and perhaps an accountant to help you select and instruct the right valuation expert and understand the valuation report when you receive it. In the second video of this series, I talk about the need for proportionality in terms of how much to spend in obtaining your valuation evidence, depending on the issues, the financial options you wish to explore and the outcomes you hope to achieve, remembering the ultimate aim of achieving a fair financial outcome. When it comes to understanding what I mean by a fair financial outcome in law, you may want to have a look at our series on how to reach your own financial agreements and what I have to say about the principle of a fair financial outcome in that series. You'll also find a supporting guide on that website, all about that. 
If you decide that a formal valuation is needed, in the third video, I talk about whether you each need your own expert or whether one expert instructed by you both will do, and if so, how to go about selecting them. In the fourth video, I talk about what your instructions to the expert should include, depending on the issues and the financial options you wish to explore, and of course, again, the outcome you're trying to achieve. It's worth remembering and keeping in mind that however much information you provide the valuer with in your instructions, there's a good chance they will require more information as they get stuck into that task of valuing the business. So be ready to answer their questions using an agreed process to do so. Now also on this webpage, I provide a guide list of the kind of information your value is likely to need, which you can refer to as well as the following guides, which you'll also find on this webpage. First, a good practice guide produced by the organization resolution. Second, a guidance for instructing experts produced by the Civil Justice Council. And third, a court practice direction number 35 providing guidance on instructing experts. So there's lots of information. In the fifth video, I talk about typical examples where a formal valuation is unlikely to be necessary. And in the sixth video and final video of the series, I talk about typical examples where a formal valuation is likely to be necessary and cover some areas where the valuation expert can also provide you help with exploring the options and outcomes you wish to explore in mediation and the implication of these in terms of timing and tax. Now I do this because in mediation I find that some people, understandably, wish to get on with the process and want to know whether they can avoid the expense and time of obtaining a proper valuation and in some circumstances, it is inappropriate to do so. These six videos should give you enough to be thinking about, hopefully, and to be working with for now. So moving on swiftly, let's have a look at the first video all about proportionality. Thanks very much for watching.